Okay, in the packet, I am picking up on number 23 in the packet, and I'm going to give you some help with a whole bunch of problems from the pink packet, starting at number 23 here. All right, we have graphed this, but unfortunately did it wrong, and I'll show you why. Uh, the roots were fine. The fact we bounced here was fine, but the y-intercept was off. If I put in 0 for the x, the y-intercept is where x equals 0. So I'll put a 0 here and a 0 here and a 0 here, and if I was like making a little list of statements that I would write down for the test, I would write down, I'm going to give you a bunch that I will give you a hint on that, and then maybe you should flip to the back page or that separate sheet of paper that I had you take out and write these things down. Don't you want on the last night before the final to have something to look at, to brush up? I'm going to give you that list so if you pay attention. All right, this is one of those things. The y-intercept is where x equals 0. I would write that down. Unless you've got it memorized so well you couldn't possibly ever forget it. The y-intercept where x equals 0. So I'm going to put a 0 in right here, and I get negative 2 squared, and then I get 0 plus 1 is 1, and then I do 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So by using that little statement of the y-intercept is where x equals 0, I now know that this is 4 times 1, which is 4, times negative 3 is negative 12. That isn't down low enough. That's only touching at like negative 2 or something. So negative 12, it should be touching like way down here. So now I'm going to redraw my graph. It's really close to right, but there we go. That's a better answer for number 23. All right, number 23b is a lot like that, and I would recommend you factor it. I would start on number 23b by factoring that. You can factor out an x squared, and you'll be able to see a bunch of stuff happen there. All right, the next graph. Do you get on this graph, I think everybody would know this part. If I said, where is this function less than 0, and it's like this, do you get that where it's less than 0 is this part right here? And then that seem obvious, but here's the part everybody forgets. Directions don't say find where it's less than 0. It says find where it's less than or equal to zero. Isn't this a spot where it's equal to zero? Isn't this a spot where it's equal to zero? All right, so those are all the answers. Let's say this is at negative two. It's at negative two, positive two, and then from, let's say that's at five, and from five to infinity. So it works here, here, and from here on, it works. Okay, I'm not giving the exact right answers there. I, you have to figure it out for yourself. Moving on to number 25 under properties. Determine if its inverse is a function. Well, first of all, let's make sure you understand how to figure out if something is a function. Is that a function? Yes or no? Yes, because it passes the what? Vertical line test. I might write that on my list of little notes to remember the night before the test. Tell if something's a function, it's a vertical line test. Here's what you probably are not so fresh on. How do you tell if something's inverse will be a function? What test is that? The horizontal line test. The horizontal line test tells you if its inverse is a function. Would this thing pass the horizontal line test? No, hits more than once. So therefore, its inverse is not a function. If it passes the vertical line test, it's a function. So this guy's a function. But it doesn't pass the horizontal, so its inverse is not a function. All right, so on each of those, on number 25, you'd graph it. Do you remember how those look? If you have 1 over x, it generally looks something like that. So that passed the vertical line test? Yep, it passed the horizontal line test. So therefore, its inverse is a function. And therefore, they don't ask this, but that's just in case. I don't think they would throw it on. But that special function kind where it passes both tests, it's called a one-to-one -one function. All right, moving on, number 26. Number 26, how do you find a domain? The two things you're looking for on domain, this might be worthy of your notes. You're looking for square roots that are negative, or you're looking for denominators that are zero. This is for domain. So on number 26a, can I make that have a denominator of zero? Nope doesn't even have a denominator. So I can't crash it with that. Can I crash it with having a square root be negative? doesn't have a square root. So 
I can't crash it with that, so therefore I can't crash it. So therefore, what's the domain? All reals. You could say from negative infinity to positive infinity, you could say all reals. Let's look at B. Does that one have fractions that we could crash? Yes, it does. And what would crash it? If x was 0 or if x was what? 3. So the answer to domains are always all reals except what? And in this case, everything works except 0 and negative 3. Or sorry, 3. When you get to the square root kind, like you, on, like you will on C as in cats, it's a weird looking C. Try that again. Okay, on C, it's square root of 4 minus x squared on the top. And on the bottom, it's x minus 3. Well, there's an important spot, of course, is 3. 3 is going to make this thing not work. It's going to make it undefined. On this kind, I'd make a number line. And I would say, because there's a whole range of things that would make this thing crash. Anytime there's a big range of things, you want a number line. And here's 3. And it won't work at 3 because 3 is an undefined spot. And I'm going to take this thing underneath the root and do something you haven't seen in a while. The stuff underneath the root, you want to set greater than or equal to 0. 4 minus x squared is greater than or equal to 0. Now I'm going to subtract 4. Negative x squared is greater than or equal to negative 4. Have I divided by a negative yet? No, but I'm about to. So what if I divide by a negative? Right now, what has to happen? Switch the sign. So I go x squared less than or equal to 4. And I'm really close to done, and a lot of people just go, oh, so it's 2. Noob. This is that one you've lost five points on so far if you don't understand it. And I'll explain it one more time. When you take a square root here, do you remember that this needs to be absolute value of x less than or equal to 2? And then if it's an absolute value, you have two answers. x is less than or equal to 2, and x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So then you put them all on the number line. Here's a 2. And is it necessarily not work there? No, nope, that actually works there because it's a 0. And if it's 0 on the top, it's not crashing. And then the negative 2 would be a little further down here. And same deal, it works there, but it's an important point. Now you've got to test all the zones around it. For example, if I wanted to put in 4. If I put in a 4 and test it, if I put in a 4 here, do you see I end up with a negative really big number underneath the square root? Because it's negative, the 4 gets squared, and then I subtract that. So it's 4 minus 16, so it would be negative 12. Can't have a negative 12 under the root. That whole area does not work. So you're looking for areas where it will not crash. And the area where I just was in, that would make it crash. All right, I don't want to finish that one, but I've at least started it for you. This was 26C. Now, some of you guys are not taking this opportunity to get some free help. I recommend it. You have to do all these problems. They are all going to be turned in. This is not like optional day. You're going to be turning them in on the day of the final. Okay. Now, how if you don't do them, the worst thing that can happen to you is that if you don't do well on the final, you can get lower than 50% because you haven't shown effort. If you've shown the effort of doing the packet, then you're guaranteed minimum 50%, which is an important thing because if you get like a 30% in the final, that would really hurt your grade bad. If you don't turn this in, you're going to keep the 30%. All right, so to get this done, the other thing is, it may be put in the grade book as homework. I'm not going to say for sure what I'm going to do on that, because I haven't decided, to be honest. But I'm telling you to do it. Do all the problems. And it's due the day you hand in your final, or the day you are going to take your final, is when you're going to hand this in. Okay? So do it. So don't pass up the chance to get free answers right now. Okay, moving on to letter, or number 27, part A. On the whole 27 area, I would write graph it. Because on problems like 27, if you have a picture in front of you, it becomes really easy. So it's 10 minus x squared. So that means I'm going to rewrite it. Negative x squared plus 10. Do you agree that that is a parabola to start with? Remember that? x squared. Then, do you get that that negative there makes it flip? There's a flipped parabola. I'm getting close. What's the 10 do? Moves it up. There, now I got a little picture of it. Now that I have the picture of it, it's so much easier because when they say what's the range, I just look, oh, well, how low does it go to how high does it go? Now that I have the picture, the range, I hope, should be easy for you. 
from negative infinity to what's the highest it tops out at? From negative infinity to 10 is your answer then. Does it touch 10? Yes. So you have a bracket on the 10. All right, so for 27 on all of those, A, B, C, D, E, if you know what the pec, just make a little quick sketch. Once, once you have the sketch, you got it. It'll be easy to do the range. Okay, uh, skipping down to, do you remember what 1 over x looks like as a graph? Because otherwise 28 is going to be difficult. That's 1 over x. Do you remember what 1 over x squared looks like? Remember what the, we call that thing? 1 over x squared is the volcano. Again, things for your list of stuff to have memorized for the test. This is 1 over x. This is 1 over x squared. And then if they move it right, left, up, down, it's pretty easy from there. If you just go like minus 2 over here, that's on the outside. That would be down 2. Um, if I had it on the inside with the x, that would be right 2. All right, technically if it was on the outside, it'd have to be more like up here. That'd be like minus 7. That means the whole function moves down 2. And this means right 2. Ah, down 7, I mean. Down 7 and right 2 for that one. Okay, moving on. Let's get to 28. It's a lot like 20, or 28 and 29 are a lot alike. I'm going to move to 30. On number 30, I would expect you only to know that you could factor it, but that really doesn't help that much. So you'd want to be able to graph it. Do you know how to, I'm sure you know how to type that into your calculator, but when you type it into your calculator and your calculator comes up with something like that, do you know how to find the high spot and the low spot? It's under second calculate, max and min. This is to find the max, and you go to the left of it, to the right of it, and right on top of it, and hit enter, and it tells you the max. That's a local, it's called an extrema. Anything that's high or low spot, that's called an extrema. All right, so that's an extrema, and so is that. Those are your extrema. So you graph it, you'd find the high and low spots. So there's a few problems where you can use a graphing calc. <coughs> I want to take your jacket off. You're getting too warm. That's why you're almost asleep. It can't be because I'm boring. All right, moving on to number 32. Find the vertex of that function. Okay, here we go. Uh, back to number, what are we on? 30. Okay, if you graph 30, the calculator tells you the high spots, low spots. Let's do 31. 31. And it's y equals 3 over 1 plus x squared. I'm going to say x squared plus 1 because it makes me feel better about it because I know what 1 over x squared looks like. That's a volcano. And this is a volcano. And what do I really want to know on this one? Oh, all I have to know on this one is if it's odd, even, or neither. All right, I can go back to the original then. Because if I'm doing the odd, even test, I just need to know a rule that I would write down on your sheet that you're going to use the night before because I think you're going to forget it otherwise. What's the odd rule? Can anybody tell me? It starts this way. Come on, somebody's going to have this. Negative f of x, yes. If you stick in negative x into the function, and then you stick in a negative in front of the whole function, if they're equal, then you've got an odd one. How about the rule for evens? It starts the same, but it ends like that. The rule for evens is just simply if f of negative x equals f of x. This is the even rule. I'm going to use the even rule for this one. Why? Because it's got a squared in it. So if it's going to be anything, it's probably going to be even. So how do I tell for sure? I check it by sticking in negative x. I make this same exact equation, except I drop in an empty spot where the x is. I go 3 over 1 plus empty spot squared. And then I put in a negative x there. And I see what happens. Would the negative get squared off? So it would just be 3 over 1 plus x squared? Yes, it does. Now, on this side, I just had to put f of x, which is the original right here. I just copy it. 3 over 1 plus x squared. Is this the same as this? Yes, and therefore, what have I proven? It is what? It is even. Okay, so 32a, no, 31a is even. If you do one, and then it comes out that it's not even, does that mean it's automatically odd? Nope. You've got to check the odd rule. And if it still doesn't work, what if it isn't even and it isn't odd? Then it's neither. Okay. On number B, or part B, would you check it for evenness or oddness? 
Somebody else wearing their jacket. <laughs> Evens. Check it if it's even. How about on C? Check if it's odd. All right. Uh, let's move on. Number 32. There's a bunch of really... Oh, question? Even and odd? Okay. Even one was this. If you stick in negative x and you see if it comes out to the same exact thing as it was in the first place. That's the even rule. The odd one is f of negative x equals negative f of x. And you say, oh, they both have a negative. That's odd. Dumb way to remember it, but it might stick. All right, so let's move on to vertexes. These are really easy. If you know the general, back in higher algebra, we had vertex form, and we used it a lot. Do you remember what the vertex is on this? Super easy. It's sitting right there. It's 3 comma 5. Do you remember that? The vertex is just these two. And notice that this one's the opposite. Why? Because it's on the inside. And then it's the opposite of what you expect. Okay. So then, what if it's an absolute value? Same exact deal. What's the vertex? What comma what? 5 comma 4. The vertex is just sitting right here and here. It's just this one's always the opposite of what you'd expect. Okay, that would be 32 and all of them like that. Let's move on to 33. On number 33, we have graphs that are odd, even, or neither. And I want to just remind you of a couple that are odd and even. That graph, it's got perfect symmetry like that. What do you think that is, even or odd? That one's even. Okay, how about something like that, even or odd? Still even, okay. The ones that are odd, they're going to have what's called point symmetry. Symmetry directly through the origin. Take a point here, any point. Go through the origin, out the other side. See how there's a point that matches up with it? Another one from here. Go through. Looks like there's another spot that would match up with it right there. So that one has odd symmetry. If it's got that kind, you might want to make a little sketch of that. That's odd. The other one was even. A parabola is your classic even, right? And the odd one is like x cubed. That would be a classic odd one. This is x cubed right here. All right. Um, so one that pe trips people up is c as in cat. When the function looks like this. Wait a minute, I missed. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it goes like this. Does that one have odd symmetry? Definitely doesn't have even symmetry. Does it have odd? Yeah. You are correct. It has odd symmetry. I'll show you why. If I go through here, there's always one on the other side that matches up with it. Start here. One that matches up with it. See? All right. So that one's odd. All right. Moving on. Horizontal and vertical asymptotes and holes. Okay. Horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Do you remember the whole bigger on bottom, bigger on top, same on both deal? All right. Then... You are remembering the which ones, horizontal or verticals? I'd put this on your night before list. Horizontal asymptotes, that's Bob. And I would even cross out your H and put a Y there. Horizontal, you remember me saying that dumb little word? The horizontals, that reminds you that these are Y equals things. Remember, this is not a multiple choice test. So if you say that the horizontals are x equals blah, 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 you're going to get it wrong. You have to say y for the horizontals. y equals things. And there's three things they can be. Bigger on bottom, bigger on top, same on both. Bigger on bottoms are y equals outside. Remember that? We learned at first that it was y equals 0. Then we learned that if they put something like this there that moves the whole graph up 5, of course, that's going to change it from y equals 0 to y equals 5. So it's whatever's on the outside of the fraction. On letter A of your homework, there's nothing on the outside of the fraction, so it's y equals 0 if it was a bigger on bottom. The one on the homework, though, is actually same on both. Do you remember what the rule is for a sob? Yeah. Ratio, good. Y equals ratio. The ratio lead coefficients is 1 over 1, so this guy's horizontal asymptote would be y equals 1 because it's a ratio of those two numbers. Y equals 1 over 1. All right. And then the last option is bots. And the bots are none. There is no asymptotes for bots. If it's bigger on top, there is no horizontal asymptote. 
Okay, how about the vertical asymptotes? I did not call them verticals. I called them what? Verticals. Asymptotes. Because they're x equals things. And they only come from the denominator. See, like this. This guy, the one on the packet. What's its vertical or vertical asymptotes? X equals what? 1, because that's the thing from the denominator that will make it crash. And if it's making it crash, that means that it's a asymptote. It won't be on the graph because you can't graph it because it just failed, so it's called an asymptote. All right, then on the top, you have your bigger on bottom, bigger. No, wait, wait, I'm wrong. To find your horizontals for this problem, for A in the packet, the horizontal again was that it was same on both, so it was y equals 1. So y equals 1 is the horizontal, x equals 1 was the vertical. Yes, sir? All right. Right now, all we covered on that was, oh, how about this? You asked about square root asymptote. Here's the graph of a square root. You tell me, does that have any asymptotes in it? Nope. I, I know what you're saying. You're saying over here it doesn't work, right? But there's still not an asymptote here. Then an asymptote means that the line will get closer and closer and never touch. There is other things that have asymptotes, but square roots are not one of them. So if you look at your section here, it's all fraction ones. So just focus on that, because that's obviously what we're trying to teach you about. All right, let's move on to number 35, and it's domain. We're almost done, boys and girls. You only have like two more questions to get through. And then we can open the door and get it cooler in here, because I know it gets weirdly hot. Okay, number 35 is A, square root of x minus 3. Well, first thing I would do if I was trying to find its inverse or sorry, it's the domain of its inverse, is I would find the domain and range of the original. If I find this guy's domain and this guy's range, then the inverse for it later, they just reverse the domain and the range. So I want to find this guy's domain and range. I want a picture. If I have a picture of it, it'll be way easier. It's a square root, so it's the normal square root looks like this, and then it says minus 3. That means move 3 to the right. There we go. Now my domain and range. My domain and range of this guy. Domain is from 3 to infinity. The range is from how low to how high. Ranges go like this. The lowest it goes is 0 to the highest it goes is infinity. So bottom line, there's your original domain and range. So now if you want the inverses range, no, domain, sorry. The domain of this inverse then I really needed the range. That's the only one I really needed because now it's going to flip and become the domain will be from 0 to infinity. Remember, inverses, the x's and the y's flip. So if I figured out the range for the original, that was about y's before. Since the, the y's and x's flip, it's going to become the domain of the inverse. Question on that. Oh, th that is true. If you wanted to, you could say domain of the f of negative 1, but I wouldn't expect all of that. If you just had this answer right there from 0 to infinity, I'd be happy. Yes? Uh, then that sort of implies the in... The, no, just don't do that. <laughs> Actually, honestly, I wouldn't mess around with all that. I'd just write 0 to infinity. I wouldn't need you to write anything other than like to describe what that is. All right, let's move on to number 36. We're almost done here. Consider the graph of an even passes through this. Identify another point on it. And then the graph of the odd that passes through the, You know what? This would be really good because we just talked about even and odd already today. And you already know kind of generally what even and odd look like. So if something's even and it has a point over here, then do you get that it's going to have a point over there that matches up with it? All right. So I'm going to save 36 and 37 to remind you on Tuesday because that way it will give us a chance to talk about even and odd. Again, it will stick in your mind better. So bottom line is I'm done. I am going to go through the last 
several pages. I won't be able to hit everything, but I'll hit the last high points on Tuesday. If you're one of the kids that wants to take a retake uh, of the last cumulative, you're going to want to do that on Tuesday. Uh, you can do it either before school, during school, or after school. I'm fine with any of those options. The after school one you have to talk to me about during class, like right now, except on Tuesday, and say I want to take it after school, and then I'll go write your name on one and put it in the testing room. If you don't ask me, there won't be one there for you. So, Okay, that's all I have for review for today from the pink packet. That you're gonna have